September 14th, 2033, 11.15 a.m. Visioni and I have been trailing this wheeled automaton for a while now. Its constant dialogue hasn't ceased. Obtain groceries from producer AI. Clean home unit. Help masters an act of reproduction. Over and over again. We've gone at least five blocks, still no signs of active human presence. 12.28 p.m. We followed it all the way to an apartment building. It went up a lift and in through the roof. The door was locked, as it would be on any conceivable world. This would be seen as a grave setback, as I'm not much of a locksmith, if not for Visioni's still unexplainable abilities. She extended her index finger toward the lock and whispered more Latin, Aperire vertici, crinim abstolorat. A spark leaped like static shock, and the doors were open. Still incredible, unexplainable, and self-explanatorily magical. We entered the house, and it is from within its walls that I write this now. It didn't seem too unusual at first. Old dusty furniture that hadn't been touched in years, a fridge that was astonishingly stocked, and of course the robot making its rounds through the halls, oblivious to our presence. I was about to take Visioni by the hand and go elsewhere, beginning to think we should see no human presence on this world. We would just open the portal and try again. Then, a single forceful word emerged from the upper floor. Fuck! Of all the words that could have indicated another presence, that was perhaps the most human. I let Visioni stay behind and slowly walked up the stairs. A stupid idea at the time, foolish some may say. Anyone could have been up there. Perhaps they were dangerous, deranged, or just scared and confused like us. I listened for other sounds, hearing only the occasional click of keys in a computer mouse. I made it to the end of the hall and opened the door, facing the back of a young man hunched over a desktop. Hello? I said. Come on, Chaos. We gotta get his gold. The man said, failing to acknowledge me. Use your ash sword, he continued. I approached and looked over his shoulder to the screen. It was an MMO, very similar to those on my world like World of Warcraft. Hello? This time more annoyed than cautious. I tapped his shoulder, and he just brushed it as if I were nothing but an itch or an irritation. Not worth anything more than a reflex. I kept trying to get his attention, ask him questions, but he would only talk to this chaos person who I assumed to be another player somewhere else in the world. Come on, man, hurry up! Really? That's the armor you're going with? Do you want to find a raid? Finally, after 30 minutes, a word of relief. Alright, man, see you tomorrow. Freaking finally. I could talk to this guy. But no, he didn't even leave his chair. He exited out of the MMO, apparently called Goblin Quest, and signed into another game resembling Minecraft, called Cave Game. I had had it. I didn't have all the time in the world to study what made this place different from my own. There were much more interesting Earths in the multiverse. I went back downstairs to see Visioni sitting on the couch, waiting for me. Whoever he is, he's too absorbed in his computer games to talk to me. It'd take forever to find another person if my hunch is right, and this world isn't worth all that time. I told her. I have an idea of who we could talk to. She said. I raised my eyebrow, wondering what she was talking about. Just then, 
the robot servant came around the corner and she raised her hand toward it. Ili mens locator. A flash of light and the robot stopped. Its eyes adjusted as if it were trying to focus. Its arms moved up and down and its tracks pulled it back and forth a foot or so. Who? Oh. It stammered. Who are you? It asked. I looked at Visioni in astonishment, my mouth slightly agape. I gave him sentience of his own. If anyone has answers to this silent place, it'd be him, she explained. Sen sentience. Ah, I am alive. The machine questioned. Yes, you are. I answered, uncertain of it myself. Can we ask you a few questions? That is where we are now. Visioni is questioning the machine. Gamer Boy is still upstairs, drowned in his digital domain. And I write this here. Maybe we'll get some answers. As to whether or not they'll make sense to either of us, that is a question in itself. Date. I don't know. I assume September 15th, maybe 16th. I won't even guess the time. I write this from a solid glass prison, suspended in mid-air, if I can guess, electromagnetism. I'm getting ahead of myself. You, dear reader, need to be brought up to speed. To the best of my ability and hazy memory, I'll try to transcribe what I can. I remember that Visioni. Goodness, I wonder where she is, and I hope she's okay. Began questioning the robot she had just made sentient. These were the questions asked, at least some of them. Do you have a name? None of us have names. We are just meant to serve our masters. Who is your master? My master, the man upstairs, is known as Riley. Why is he ignoring us? Master Riley is not aware of this world. His world is the screen. All masters' worlds are the screen. Why is the screen so important? Many years ago, there was a company called Atari. Atari created entertainment simulators to stimulate the mind of masters, to force the production of endorphins. Then, Atari fell. Nobody wanted the simulations anymore. After a time, simulations rose again on home computers, and everyone wanted to keep playing. We were created to fill the work gap that was created as the simulations rose in popularity. And now we do it all. Masters are raised by the screen from birth, from which we deliver them from their mother's womb and assist masters to begin fertilization. Masters never leave the screen. What about Nintendo? I interrupted. They never made computer games. How did they fare? The robot paused, as if in thought, and then spoke. There are no records of any Nintendo, it replied. I found that rather humorous. A world without Nintendo, populated by video game addicts. Before I could ask another question, it said something that seemed out of place. Something is coming, it said, as if in warning. I beg your pardon? I asked. By this point, Visioni's attention had been directed elsewhere to various technologies and trinkets, which I was tempted to tell her to take. Early warning system for natural disasters. Something is coming. What is coming? I pressed. Something is coming. It repeated. What? I demanded. 
Something is coming, it yelled, signaling Visioni to return to my side. Something is here, it said as the power down and the room went dark. Power outage, and a drastic one. Ah! Screamed the kid upstairs, followed by sounds of scratching and banging. He had been raised with a computer as his entire world, and now his world has literally crashed. He has no mind, no being, and it was no surprise. It was then, firmly gripping Visioni's hand in mine, that it all went black. I woke up here, in this hovering glass box, surrounded by a dark blue void with no apparent edges. I'm done writing for now. There's nothing more to write. Date. Heaven knows. I certainly don't. I tried the oscillator, and it doesn't work. It sparks for a second or two and then stops. Wherever I am, I apparently can't leave. Around me, more boxes have begun to appear, all occupied by me. Different versions of me. Some identical, some barely different, some entirely so as far as I can see. Some of them are still asleep, others are awake many trying to get my attention. I pretend to ignore their signals. I certainly can't hear them. Date. Unknown. The other boxes are gone, and I'm starting to move noticeably. In front of me is an island of stone hovering in the void, occupied by a large blue light. I see another box coming toward the island. It's Visioni. The walls and ceiling of our prisons vanish as we approach the land. I step off, and the light speaks. Hello, James Everett Thatcher. September 14th, 2033, 11.15 a.m. Visioni and I have been trailing this wheeled automaton for a while now. Its constant dialogue hasn't ceased. Obtain. Whispered more Latin. Aperire vertici, crinim abstolorat. A spark leaped like static shock, and the doors were open. Still incredible, unexplainable, and self-explanatorily magical. We entered the house, and it is from within its walls that I write this now. It didn't seem too unusual at first. Old dusty furniture that hadn't been touched in years, a fridge that was astonishingly stocked, and of course the robot making its rounds through the halls, oblivious to our presence. I was about to take Visioni by the hand. It went up a lift and in through the roof. The door was locked, as it would be on any conceivable world. This would be seen as a grave setback, as I'm not much of a locksmith, if not for Visioni's still unexplainable abilities. She extended her index finger toward the lock and groceries from producer AI, clean home unit, Help masters an act of reproduction. Over and over again. We've gone at least five blocks. Still no signs of active human presence. 12.28 p.m. We followed it all the way to an apartment building. 